I am so nervous to read this book right now. I have been putting it off all month, but today is the day that I finally read A Court of Thorns and Roses. I know I promised this reading vlog literally weeks ago, but I've just been so nervous to start reading this book, mainly because it's fantasy and I'm not a huge fan of fantasy, but I'm trying to get out of my comfort zone in 2022 and I'm trying to read books that I normally wouldn't gravitate towards. This is definitely a book that pre-TikTok I probably would have never read, but since it's so popular and I've heard so many good things about this book, I've also heard some not so great things about this book, but since I've heard so many people talk about this book I thought it was time to dip a little into the fantasy world so that is what today's reading vlog is about. If you are new to my channel every time I do a reading vlog I try my best to not include any spoilers until the very end where I give you my final review and thoughts on the book. I'll definitely give you guys a warning so you can exit out at that point of the video if you haven't read this book yet. With that being said let's just jump right in and start reading. Reading. There's a map. Cool. I don't really know what this means yet, but I'm sure I'll have a better understanding once I start reading. Chapter one. I know this makes me like a huge baby, but I really hate reading about animals being killed. Even if it's like animals being hunted for food, it's just, I don't like it. So six pages in and I'm like, uh, can we skip the part where she kills the wolf please and thank you because I hate reading about it Okay, how do you pronounce the main character's name? Feyre? I think it's Feyre I'm so sorry if I mispronounce her name throughout this book I should probably look it up so I don't annoy you guys But I think it's Feyre Why is she the only one hunting in her family? I don't understand that She seems to be the youngest Yet she's the one risking her life going out into the woods to hunt Is there a reason her dad and her two sisters can't help? Like I'm confused oh okay i just found out why the father can't hunt i should have waited a little bit but what about the sisters Feyre's two sisters are extremely annoying and selfish, especially Nesta. Like, I'm only 14 pages in and I want to smack her. Why is she so mean? Literally, Feyre went into the woods, risked her life, brought back a deer, right? A doe? That's a deer, right? And she doesn't even appreciate that when they were literally about to start. Yeah, I don't like her sisters at all. From my understanding, Feyre is the youngest in her family, but they act like she's the oldest. She sounds like she's the only one with some sense. I don't understand why her family treats her like that when they should all be helping to feed one another. Like, why does all the pressure fall on Feyre's shoulders? That's so unfair. Even if she wasn't the youngest, even if she was the oldest, I would still think that's unfair fair because they're all capable well aside from the father they're all capable of pitching in and helping out at least helping her to hunt or helping her around the house so she doesn't have to do everything but seems like she's the one that takes care of everything like she's the head of household and that's not fair just finished chapter three and i'm about to start chapter four so basically the first 32 pages of the book was a history lesson regarding the fairies and I got to know more about their world and what they are. I've also been learning why the villagers are so afraid of them. I really appreciate that the author is building up the world and giving the reader me details in the background regarding the fairies. I feel like if I would have started reading and there was no build up at all, I would be so lost, <laughs> especially since this is like my first fantasy book so i really like that so far to me though it seems like it's mostly gossip or folklore because it seems that everyone's afraid but the stories seem a little exaggerated i mean i don't know i'm only 32 pages in the villagers could be right and why they hate the fairies but to me it seems like stories have been exaggerated and version of history has just been manipulated through the years also shit's about to go down in chapter four which i guess i can tell you because it's included in the back cover so it's not like i'm spoiling the book for you one of the fairies found Feyre and her family and is demanding to know who killed the wolf apparently that wolf was just not a wolf he was also a fairy 
Barry. So his friend just showed up at Feyre's house and is demanding answers and is demanding to know who killed his friend. Now Feyre has two options. She can either die right then and there, she can be murdered by the fairy, or she can go back to his world and live with him for the rest of her life as his prisoner essentially. She obviously accepts in order to spare her family because she deeply fears the fairies. I'm kind of happy that she gets to leave her family behind because I don't like them at all. I think they're using her. I'll be interested to see how they fend for themselves now that she will be gone. Her father did tell her to never come back even if she gets to escape which means that he knows that they don't deserve her and if you know that you don't deserve someone why don't you take the time to actually treat them with respect that's a whole different ball game I just read the first 100 pages of the book and I do have to say that I'm actually enjoying it. I am surprised that I am, but it's been such a good read so far. The main character, Feyre, I like her. I like her sassiness. I like how she doesn't back down from a fight or an argument, but she can be really annoying at times my fridge and I found myself rolling my eyes at some of the things that she has done so far in the book but I do enjoy her sassiness I will say I don't know much about Tamlin though aside from the fact that he's a fairy a high-ranking one at that also I think the fact that he didn't kill her right then and there makes him compassionate I get the vibe that he doesn't really enjoy killing others fairies or humans i feel like he could have easily killed Feyre and her whole family and he didn't instead he chose to bring her back to his world his land and he's kept her safe this whole time and hasn't treated her like a prisoner at all i really hope that i get to know more about him soon because right now he is a mystery but i'm really enjoying reading this book so far you guys who would have thought i'm kind of upset that i waited so long to read it honestly Wow, I thought I was stubborn, but Feyre takes it to a whole nother level. Jeez, girl, relax. It's obvious that Tamlin has feelings for Feyre, or at least is starting to get feelings for her, but Feyre is too busy hating him and the rest of the fairies to even notice it. And she's also still focused on getting back to her family, which I understand how important family is, don't get me wrong. But like I mentioned a million times already, in this video i don't like her family i don't think they deserve her so the fact that she keeps trying to go back is really annoying me even though i understand the reason why she's trying to go back also i really like that the chapters are short and sweet i really have been enjoying the format of the book so far let's keep reading I love how Feyre doesn't back down from a fight like even if she's about to be killed she does not back down and she holds her ground and I love her for that. I just read something that confirms what I thought earlier that I don't think Tamlin actually enjoys killing other fairies or humans even if they deserve it and that makes me think he's even more compassionate than I originally thought. I really want to know what his story is though because I still don't no. Was he in love before? Did he lose the love of his life? Like what's going on? You know? Literally just went on Reddit to find out how to pronounce all the names from this book. <laughs> this is going to be such a lifesaver. Are you gonna read with me? Oh, big stretch, big stretch. I really like the side character Lucian. He's really witty and has a smart mouth and I love that. I find myself reading his lines and actually laughing. I hope that he sticks around and that nothing happens to him because I love the comedy. We're 147 pages in and we finally had a decent interaction between Tamlin and Feyre about time it's not romantic at all but they finally were able to have a conversation with both the guards down which is a start and an improvement to their relationship <laughs> i think Feyre is finally trusting tamlin finally a fairy died you guys in a really brutal way at that but i guess the good thing out of that situation was that Feyre realized she actually 
cares about the fairies like at the beginning of the book she absolutely hated them and thought that they were monsters but as she witnessed this fairy die she actually felt bad so it seems to me like her opinion on fairies is changing and that's a good thing for Tamlin so that makes me happy but I'm so sad about the fairy that died <laughs> Tamlin just kissed Feyre on the cheek and it was so heartwarming. He has feelings for her. Tamlin just said, one day, one day there will be answers for everything, he said, releasing my hand and stepping away. But not until the time is right, until it's safe. So does that mean that there was another reason why he spared Feyre's life? other than the treaty between humans and fairies? It makes me think that he knew about Feyre before she killed the wolf. I don't know, interesting. Oh my God, Feyre does not make the best decisions. That annoys the living heck out of me. She knows what the right thing to do is and she does the complete opposite. Like I understand being stubborn and you know, not liking being told what to do, but girl, it's for your own safety and she does the exact opposite. I just want to shake her at times and be like, girl, stop putting yourself in danger. <laughs> Hamlin finally admitted to Feyre that he finds her attractive or that he's attractive to her, I think. Unless he's going to make her forget the next day. But he definitely made it clear that he wants to spice up their relationship. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> finally, it only took about 197 pages for him to admit that just got to chapter 23 i'm about halfway done with the book i will have to say that nothing has really happened <laughs> there's been a lot of world building there's been a lot of character development well has there really been a lot of character development i feel like freyra has grown a little bit she doesn't hate the fairies completely now so that's good aside from the fact that both characters know that they're attracted to one another nothing else substantial has happened between them i can definitely understand why people think this book is slow but i'm actually enjoying that it's slow maybe because i'm new to the fantasy genre i feel like i appreciate the build up of the world and the characters more and i haven't want to put the book down at all Feyre and tamlin finally had their moment together you guys and i'm freaking out about time it only took about 200 pages for them to have a cute romantic moment i love them together shit is about to go down you guys oh my god i do not like resand I think that's how you pronounce it. I think he's a jerk, an ass, downright mean. Things just got spicy. I'm not gonna lie, I find the sex scene a little weird, a little cringe. <laughs> just because like the claws and he's technically a beast, she's a human. It's definitely something I have to get used to, but I mean it was still cute I guess. <laughs> I have to be honest, it was a little bit weird for me. But it happened, finally. <laughs> So Tamlin's and Feyre's happiness was short-lived because of the asshole Resand. I can't stand him. So since he found out that Feyre was staying with Tamlin, shit's about to go down and I can't really say it because then it's going to spoil the book if you haven't read it. I feel for Tamlin. Honestly, I feel more for him than I do Feyre. Because I feel like he has a lot more to lose than she does. Hey guys, it is now the next day, still morning, literally just got out of the shower and I sat down right away to film this portion of the video. Ignore the curly hair. But I want to give you guys my final thoughts on the book. I finished a book late last night and I didn't vlog anymore of me reading it because I got to a really crucial part of the book where I felt like I couldn't make any comments on the book without giving major plots away. So I decided to just finish the book on my own and then sit down this morning to film the review. So that's exactly what we're doing. The first half of this review is going to be completely spoiler free. In case you want to hear my final thoughts before you make a decision to 
read the book for yourself. And then the second half of my review will actually contain spoilers. So for the first half of the review, I have to say that I give this book a four out of five stars. I absolutely loved this book. I know that a lot of people complain that this book is slow, but I actually enjoyed the pace. I think it was a great pace for me being new to the genre. I've read books that are so slow and I've wanted to literally pull my hair out. But with this book, I actually enjoyed the pace. I enjoyed every page that I was reading, even if it didn't really add anything substantial to the main plot. All of the action of this book definitely happened in the last couple chapters. So again, I understand why people think it's slow, but I personally enjoyed how slow it was and I have no complaints about that. There is definitely a lot of world building in this book. I feel like you really get to understand the fairies, the high phase, the relationship between the fairies and humans and why humans hate the fairies and vice versa. So I think it's slow for a reason. So I'm not going to complain about it. I again actually enjoyed it. I think this is a great book for someone who wants to dive into the fantasy genre but feels a little intimidated. I honestly felt intimidated by this book. I did not want to start it for the longest time for that reason. And now that I look back, I'm like, girl, you should just start it because you love it. <laughs> so if you're new to the fantasy genre and you feel intimidated by it, definitely start with this book and I think you'll really enjoy it. Again, just keep in mind that it is a slower paced type of book. Now for the spoiler review. I'm going to be talking mainly about the main characters and the side characters in this part of the review and my thoughts on them. So let's start with Feyre. Feyre pissed me off so many times throughout this book, but as I mentioned earlier in this vlog, I really enjoyed her sassiness. I enjoyed that she didn't back down for a fight and that was really evident when she went back to save Tamlin and the rest of the fairies. She literally put her life on the line multiple times to save Tamlin. I really admire her confidence and her ability to not back down from a fight. Although there were certain instances in this book where she put herself in dangerous situations, despite Tamlin and Lucian them telling her to do the opposite. She didn't listen, therefore putting them in dangerous situations because they ended up having to save her numerous times. So that was a little bit annoying. I also have notes on my thoughts in case you're wondering why I keep looking down. I really like that at the end of the book she became a high fae. I saw that coming from a mile away just because how could she possibly be a human and be with Tamlin? I felt like she would have had to become a high fae eventually. I didn't think it was going to happen in this book but I guess it makes sense. I definitely think that she's going to have a major like PTSD as a result of killing the innocent fairies. I think that she's going to have a lot to work through in the second book because even at the end of the first book she mentions multiple times how she doesn't know how she's going to live with the guilt of killing those fairies so i'm interested to see how she ends up coping with that in the second book moving on to tamlin i definitely have mixed feelings regarding his character i really enjoyed reading his interaction with Feyre. however i felt like he really sat down and took a lot of shit that he didn't have to take i wanted him to to fight back a little bit harder. That's just my opinion. And it really pissed me off in the final chapters when Feyre was literally putting her life on the line for him and for the rest of the fairies. And he refused to acknowledge her or refused to look at her. And when he did look at her, it was with a cold stare. I think he was trying not to show any emotions to not maybe throw Feyre off her game or to not make Amrita go harder on Feyre. I don't know, but that part of the book really annoyed me because I'm like, dude, she's literally fighting for her life. The least you can do is look at her. You know what I mean? And I felt bad that every time Feyre would look for him, he would kind of just have a blank stare. So that pissed me off. I wish that he would have fought back a little bit more. I feel like he easily gave up. So that's just my thoughts on him. I absolutely loved Lucian. I felt like he made the book super funny at times. I loved his witty remarks. I hope that he makes an appearance in the second book and that we get to see more of him for sure. Moving on to Reese, I really don't like him. I know that he helped Feyre 
at the end but I just felt like he caused a lot of their problems and I don't really like that he made Feyre swear to spend a week with him for the rest of her life in order to heal her I feel like that was very manipulative I feel like a lot of the characters were manipulative in this book but specifically that I felt like why couldn't you just help her if you wanted to help her all along why do you have to force her to spend a whole week with you literally for the rest of her life knowing damn well that she's in love with someone else I really hate Hated that part of the book and I'm interested to see how that plays out in the second book. The villain of the story is Amritha. I definitely understand where she's coming from because her sister was tortured and killed by a human. I can understand why she has so much hatred towards humans in general although I think she's wrong just because one human did something horrible doesn't make them all horrible. I really enjoyed that there was an actual villain in this book. I enjoyed her character even though she was ruthless at times. Overall I enjoyed all the characters. I think they all obviously played a important role in this book and I give this book a 4 out of 5 stars. I honestly thought I was going to hate it and I ended up loving it and so many of you guys have told me that the second and third book just gets even better. I can't wait to read them. Let me know in the comments below if you've read this book or if you're planning on reading it. Let me know if you've read the whole series. I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions on this book in the comments below. And that is pretty much it for the reading vlog. I really hope you guys enjoyed hearing my thoughts and opinions. And if you enjoyed watching this reading vlog, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I would love to have you a part of my channel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys!